Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with blogtree.com. Please subscribe to Blog to Read videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Graham Swordfish Booster Iris. And I have the light here angled in a particular way because this, this version of the Graham Swordfish has what they call the iridescent case. Um, and that's why they're called iris. Um, I, I, I think they just should have called it iridescent because iris means something different than iridescent, but I guess that's like their short way of saying iridescent. Um, and the case is quite interesting, and so I, the reason I put the light here is because I want to show you some of the reflectivity, um, if that kind of like is able to go over well on this video. Um, but before you look at that, I want you to notice that it has this really nice um, black or what they call Tahitian mother of pearl dial on there. Um, you know, mostly women's watches have mother of pearl um, because it's feminine, but with this with this what they call the black one, like I said, mother of pearl, I think it looks good on some men's watches. It's hard to pull off. It's when you have an otherwise really masculine sporty look and you have like a dial or certain sections in mother of pearl, I think it looks great. Um, I tend to like it a lot. It's going to be up to you but I think it's really cool. So the, the iridescent case is apparently like incredibly difficult to make. Why, how they found out about it is probably through a lot of trial and error. And it's part of the PVD process. So basically PVD is a way of blasting molecules to steel or other, or other metals in order to chemically bond them. Um, so you have a coating and there's all these different ways of doing it with different materials and things like that. And this one, after doing several layers, creates um, a kind of reflective surface that is has these like greens and blues and purples and pinks. And depending on the light, it kind of has this sheen about it which, which changes and looks kind of nice. It's subtle and I think it's, you see it more on the sides here which are polished versus like the brushed bezel and things like that. But it's, it's a subtle thing and it's cool. And what they were able to do is, because there's a lot of green that comes out of it, they put a green um, like alligator or crocodile strap here, which looks really nice. So I'm just going to like move this light back a little bit so you can see the watch better. I think that's going to help. There you go. So ma maybe now you can see it a little bit differently in some different colors on there. I think it's kind of cool. And you know what I told Graham is that even though this is like a difficult case to make, I think they should definitely put it on other watches as well because um, this is something that would work well on not just the swordfish. So the swordfish, let's just talk about that, is this crazy guy. I mean, you have a watch with two eyes staring at you on there and they're supposed to be like the chronograph subdials. and what they did is they put these two metal sections with magnifiers that magnify at 15%. Um, <laughs> and there's no other watch on the market quite like it. I mean, I guess you could say like with MB&F and their HM3 Frog, you have a little bit of a similar look where there's like eyes looking at you, but definitely, I mean, there's eyes looking at you. And the case is, um, I think it's 48 millimeters wide. Um, again, this version is, is steel with this special application. The movement inside is essentially a base ETA that has been modified by Le Jupere. And so what you have is, first of all, the movement was flipped, right? So the pushers are on this side. And then they, and then they changed the subdial. So when I originally saw this watch, I thought all it was was a 30-minute um, a chronograph, and they took the seconds out. Um, but what I learned was that actually in this style right here, there's two hands, and you can see that those two hands right there. So you really do have a full 12-hour chronograph, and then the seconds hand is kind of put in there as well. So you have that. What you don't have is the date. I would have liked to see the date. Maybe that would have cut up the dial, but um, the date would have been nice. Um, the the most difficult thing about this watch is to read the time, <laughs> um, and. You know, this watch came out when there was this predominant theory among high-end brands that people weren't buying watches to look at the time. They were buying watches for, like, status and things like that. By the way, you can see that the movement, the sapphire crystal case back has been tinted. So you can see the movement um, through there. It's kind of dark, and it's actually pretty nicely decorated. Le Jupere does a nice job, but the movement's all, like, tinted back there. And um, it's kind of cool to see it, like, through the glass in different angles. Anyways, so there's this like theory that like people weren't 
weren't really like buying watches in order to look at the time. They were buying it just to wear them and have these cool things. So people started designing like pretty wild stuff um, on the premise that like people were using their phones to like see the time. And then they realized while well, people do use their phones and computers to see the time, they also use their watches. So this is like an interesting product that goes between because most grand watches are really legible. The problem is one, the hands blend into the dial a little bit. But more of the problem is that when they're underneath the the eyes, the um, I you just you can't really see the minute hand. So you can. I mean, you look closely, you'll you'll tell the time, but it it makes it difficult to see at a glance. Um, and for some people that want to like wear this watch and see the look of it, that's fine. Personally, this watch really grew on me. Like when I remember when I first saw this watch a few years ago, I was like, what the hell is that? Like what's going on? Like why do you have these things on the watch? Like does that how does that help? But it's kind of this funky design and like a lot of people like it and ask questions about it and notice it and um, I like that. I mean, I'm a watch guy, so I really like people noticing my watch. That's like that's important to me. Not everybody wants that, but I do, and maybe you do too. Um, start the chronograph there. Le Jeu Perret does a pro. Oh, that's okay. So usually that's the starter, but since it's flipped, that's the starter. <laughs> um, Le Jeu Perret is an interesting company. They were just bought by Citizen of, of Japan, actually. So we've yet to see what's going on. But a lot of Graham's movements come from Le Jeu Perret, um, and they're like right next to each other in Switzerland. So the price for this watch is. Um, it's like, a, I think it's about 17500 which is a lot, but um, the iridescent case is, is very difficult to make. And the reason is is that you can't, just, you can't just make the case. You have to try and make the case in the sense that there's a high failure rate. So when they're trying to produce the case, like a lot of them end up being bad or there's a lot of sections that are blotchy. And so it takes a lot of tries in order to get the case right. Um, some people can appreciate that, some people do, uh, just don't. I believe the clasp here is ceramic. Um, it's shiny, and I think they said ceramic, and that, that would make sense. Um, very unique watch, even unique for Graham, which is a unique company in itself. Um, these are very rare. Um, it's hard to find these, and I doubt you'll ever see anyone that has one of these things, because swordfish watches are not super common, and the swordfish booster iris, don't ask me what booster means, because I don't know. Um, is an even more rare model. And you can see the full review on the blog to read.com. Thanks.